Twitch stream. Like one you've never seen before, but only because. Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, today we will be um, doing some shit, I don't know. All right. Uh, previously we were looking at some neural networks, but having some trouble understanding them. Uh, so what we've done is we've taken some, oh Jesus Christ. Um, stop that. Um, uh, but we were having some trouble understanding them. So what I've done is I've taken some code here uh, that was given to me by our good friend Fierce Crocodile, and I've gone ahead and put it up here. It's run it, and it gives me some numbers of some sort. So that's, uh, that's uh, I don't know what these numbers are. I don't know what the hell they do. I don't know why they are. But hopefully we can get Fierce Crocodile on the line to explain them. So I'm about to call Fierce Crocodile, who I assume is here in the chat, and also I am chatting with him uh, in another place, but let's go ahead and get him on the line. If, Or you're just going to hear me talk into the empty space again. I don't know. I didn't check the previous recording yet. All righty. Okay, come on. I don't remember who you are. There you are. And calling. So we are waiting. Uh, last time, uh, Fierce Crocodile actually turned on video, which you couldn't see, but I could see, and it's, he is pretty damn ugly. Not as ugly as I am, but still pretty damn ugly. So let's go ahead and wait for him to pick up here. And um, meanwhile, I will just patter. There we are. Hello, hello. Hello. I cannot hear you. Say something. Yes, there. yes, yes. There you are. Awesome. Yeah, I need to agree. To Say what now? No, I got it. I just had to check and check that. Gotcha. Okay, so this is your code that you gave me. Yes, it's, it's exactly the same thing that we were working on previously. I just felt like um, I just implemented it. Okay. Um, so let's go through this code. Uh, what does this first line do here? I guess it just generates data. Let me have a look. <coughs> I think it, it's similar. To, it's actually similar to your code. So first, it just generates uh, data, test data. Because usually you want to generate test data so you can test your algorithm. Because Correct. it's now gone through, right? Okay, hold on. Now, how do I print uh, out x here? I don't know R. Just, um, maybe you just do print X. And usually I just type X and then enter, and then it puts everything out. Okay, so... But, but that's a bit stupid, because first uh, it's like uh, random uniform, 200, and then I put this in the matrices, and then I set the number of columns, because I don't really care about my axis, and then I just um, append the, the 1. I'm still trying to figure out part. I'm still trying to figure out line 1. So... <laughs> Yeah, Let's that's just then in uniform. And okay, 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 okay. We're gonna we're manual. gonna print it. <laughs> okay. First of all, let me go ahead and give you permission to edit this yourself, so we can. Uh, oh, cool. Can I do this in the link? Yeah. Yeah, normal. yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can turn on here. There's a way to do this. I've done it before. Um. No, no, no. Not settings. It's not. It's. God damn it. Not version control files. We can do this. But then there's a way to turn on. Can I not get a link or something like that? Or, or should I enter the link? The link will give you the link will give you read access. I'm trying to give you read write access. Yeah, um, it's just the first step anyway, so. I know, but and there are also many many things I'm I'm not sure about because usually you would not I guess have I guess it's just for test purpose right because usually you would also just have maybe the labels and not really like the probability again uh, they're not I'm pr I'm I was pretty ha happy that uh, converge to the correct more or less correct values and I was like oh wow I'm, I'm surprised so I cannot figure out how to turn on uh, multiplayer mode here which I normally can. Um, not, not give, me give me one second here, see if it's, no, it's not even hiding. 
Okay. Um, it's it's the exact same thing that you did. Slow down. Uh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. We're not doing <laughs> that. We're not doing yeah, that. I don't know. I don't, I don't really you want to keep I skipping to line. Technically, I guess I have one on the iPad. Uh. <laughs> I know, but I, I mean, I need to understand this, and I'm going to go step by step. And you keep wanting to like jump to adding ones to your column. I'm not ready for that yet. Um, yeah, okay. I can tell you. It's like random uniform. The first parameter is how, okay, okay. Is n, how, okay, how okay. many, okay. and then then it's between zero and one because then you like like yeah, yeah. And I, I, I give me one second. I want I want to check something. Okay. Four parameters. Give me a second. I want to check something. Jeez. Yeah, check it. Check it. <laughs> You're driving me nuts. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let me let me quickly see how to turn on. If I can't figure yeah. it out, I'll ask you some questions. <laughs> but You're so slow, and I'm uh, I'm so confused. What a good mixture. You're you're so f you're too fast. Okay. Did they turn off multiplayer mode? I have no clue. I know, but I'm trying to figure this out. Now it's pretty nice that you can you can run it in planes. Yeah. I was ex working with students, it was too difficult for them to install R Studio. Oh yeah, this is Replit is really nice. Uh, let's see if they turned off multiplayer mode. Yeah. They're also like, is this a free version? This is free. Version. This is free. Yes. Um. Oh wait. Yeah. Okay, so hang on. According to this, there should be a little... Oh, it's 2 a.m. <laughs> so it's 2 a.m. where you are? Mm -hmm. I don't claim that my brain... I guess that's just my excuse. If I don't know anything, they'll say like, oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so hang on. Need help? Share, share link. Well, okay, but I mean, the share link is not going to give you the, uh, the rewrite X. Okay, screw it. We're just going to, I'll just type. So now I want to print out X with like some sort of like, you know, word saying, this is the value of X right now. How do I do that in R? Maybe just print and then with okay. brackets and then put X in it. Um, but usually you can usually put also in the shell because if you like, if it's oh. like in, in working memory, then you can just, because it's a script language, language because it's so easy to debug. Okay, unfortunately, I think I'm in bash right now. Uh, not in, not in R. Okay. When I hit the run so button here, it oh runs. On, on the right side, isn't, isn't this uh, the shell? It's using GNU R version, whatever. Can you just highlight it and then press shift enter to execute the line? I don't know, I'm using R studio. I mean, I can do R yeah. main dot R. Is that what you mean? We're, we're in a born shell here. No, we're not in R. Oh, no, you, you mean, need, you, need you mean do like this. Curly cur function. Oh, yeah, print yeah, and yeah. then curly brackets. I actually use print and uh, and later you can scroll down. I use print to print. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, okay, hang on. Oh, yeah, you can also do it in, in the shell, but you can also. Oh, X, how do I X? X? Yeah, hang on, hang on. Oh, hang yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, see so so you do. Sh okay, see so you do. You should also just. You should just type X and then enter. Where? Otherwise. Yeah, where you, where you, no, just where you, where you are. Isn't this the R shell? No, this is uh, the bash uh, shell. Unless uh, you want me to, unless you want me to run R and stay inside oh. of R. Okay, yeah, usually. I okay, now I'm in R. So I can now do X equals run if 100 times 2. Yeah, can you then? Okay, this is really just, ugly, like, but let's take a look here. In our studio, I just uh, um, select the line, you know, I highlight This is it not our studio. Um, uh, and then I just press shift enter and then X. Okay, so this looks like it's basically 200 variables. Yes, but it has just 200 numbers, random numbers between right. 0 and 1. Or so in theory, yeah, I could say yeah. like X5 would be the fifth one. Okay. Uh, X and then bracket and then it's two-dimensional. It's two-dimensional or it's so one-dimensional? Oh shit, it is actually one-dimensional, I'm sorry, yeah. Because 100 times one two is just 200. So this yes, 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 could just, just be 200. Error, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, which, which is okay, valid. so now this line five here changes it to be a, uh, to be a matrix. 
Yes, and I said and follow through. Okay. So then it will figure out the next hundred rows. Okay. So now and it looks like this. Shit. Five for the A no hundred no. points. No. No? So line five, it should be like um hundred by two. Well this is what it is, right? See on the right hand side? Okay, so does this look like what X should be after yes, line five? Yes. Good. Yes, of course. Okay, okay. That's what I was asking you. C bind, what does this do? Uh, it means column bind. What does that do? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, now plug. this is where you add your insane value of one for yeah. some reason. Okay. Yeah. Actually, actually Andrew and C, uh, Andrew NG uh, said in this online lecture that he doesn't use this notation before, but I still use it. And okay. I don't give a da so damn. Okay. I don't really like Andrew yeah, anymore yeah. because of you. Thank you to you. I don't even like who Andrew is. So now W is just going to be a nice little simple matrix. I is awesome. He's a professor at Stanford. I'm oh, a mm. still he doesn't. You you make him sound terrible. Um. <laughs> he also found a Coursera. He also what? Found the Coursera, the website with all these online lectures together with the Coursera. 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 Oh, course R A. Okay, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, okay. So this is now a three by one matrix you just create for no good reason, right? Yeah, this is my ground truth parameter. Just, just as I told you, what you call it, map or map. Uh, right, but this is just a guess. This is this is just something you made up. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to see if I can get cut and, and paste I to work. And okay. I thought I keep them pretty small because in your code I saw like it, it, it didn't really work out as I wanted them. So I was like, oh, maybe I should fix them smaller. Okay. So this is just the yeah, yeah, sigmoid yeah. function that you've defined. Yes. And so now what is line 12 saying? So we take x and we percent. Okay. So this yeah, is this x. Means ma matrix multiplication and r. Okay. So we take x. Yeah, percent so. star percent so this is just x times w in matrix notification yes mm, right. yes yes okay. okay and this gives us um hang on this gives us okay so wait x is a um three uh 100 by three right yes and w is a one by three. No, three by one. Oh no, because you flipped it. Yeah, it's, you're right. You're right. So the result. No, it's actually actually pretty interesting. I actually learned pretty late that the default for matrices is actually uh, column matrix. And yes. So in R, the default is also I don't give it, tell them anything. Right. Yeah, of course you know, but I I learned like last year. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. After having studied computer science for 10 years, I was okay. like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. <laughs> so, so if you hadn't put the C there, this would have been a uh, 1 by 3 matrix. Oh, yeah, C means uh, concatenate, so I just give him this array. Yeah, that's... Uh, right. No, otherwise, I actually get it wrong first, and then and he thinks the other ones are parameters, and then I get something pretty messy. Okay, hang on, hang on. See, now you're confusing me again. So this is... Oh. Oh. C means just an array. It means concatenate. Okay, but hang on. That's a yeah. that's a um. It's it's all R stupid R stuff. So this is a one row by three columns. But if you put the word matrix in front of it, it becomes yes, m yeah, yeah. One matrix column, three an rows. An, an argument, an an array of numbers, right? So okay. So, but if you do this, it doesn't work. You're saying? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that gives you a totally different looking matrix. Okay. No, this is actually an array. It's not, not really a matrix. Well, it so is. It's a matrix of ones. Mm, I don't know, but if you want to... I don't know. I, I wouldn't... It might give you something unexpected if you... Yeah, yeah, okay. ...would fly an R matrix with an array. I think what this is saying is take a... See, if I put a 10 here, I'd get a matrix full of 10s. Uh, sorry. So this just no, means, yeah, no, and 
if I, I put. I made mistake. I, I made this. The this mistake uh, actually too big. Right. But right. Also little. Okay. So this so this is now we now we think like two and three are some parameters and so. Right. So this will create a an n by m. Uh, so it'll create a matrix of tens that's five by five. We don't care about that. That was just for demonstration. So now we're back to w and x, and we now say um, we said x percent star percent, which is a uh, matrix multiplication w. So now we end up with a 100 row, 100 by one matrix, right? Yeah. And now you're going to map sigmoid across every element, right? Yeah. Okay. And that gives us a bunch of numbers that are yeah. pretty close Kay. to 0.5. Okay. Okay, good deal. I'm happy so far. I know that should be between 0 and 1. Okay, so now forward is just a function that basically does what we just did. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you scroll down? Yeah, 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 because I should have done it differently. I should have defined forward and then I should have. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Noticed. I didn't clean it up. I just sort it, I don't know, like, I don't know. Half an hour, an hour. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. So forward basically takes. An array of okay. I'm gonna say this again. It takes an array so that is 100 by three, and a matrix which is one by three. Nope, three by one, and gives you a hundred by one output. Yeah. Okay. So first, so that's always a terminology because I have this forward step, and then I have I have this backward step, and and the forward step is pretty simple to. Uh, implement and for the backward you need to calculate the derivative and that's why people use frameworks like TensorFlow because then you just implement the forward step and uh, adjust all the gradients from it. You don't have to. Right. But that's what we're doing here. So the cost function. Okay, so why is the output of the sigmoid function? I skipped the skip. Uh, I skipped the step there because in his lecture he first defined the loss and then he defined the cost and the cost is then the sum over. The okay. Loss. Okay. Okay. So the loss is per element, and then you're applying the loss to all of y, and the pred is um, th somewhere you're going to define pred. I mean, when you call this function cost. You will define yeah. the pred somewhere, right? Yeah, you actually called activation it. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> just called it my prediction. Yeah. Okay. It's my prediction right now. Okay. And I, I I figured out actually why there's a minus. And I also think this this uh, one over number of elements. I think because you you use uh, later the. Mm, the learning rate. I guess it doesn't really matter. If you have a different structure for it, but uh, yeah. Okay, Maybe again, again, nice. again. Smaller. We're not. We're way behind where we want. We're way beyond where we want to be there. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so we had had the loss function. That's the last one we did, and we. I hope we agree that it was binomial cost binomial uh, distribution cost function, and there's actually the minus because we are minimizing the lot likelihood, so we are maximizing the likelihood. I, I don't know what you're talking about, unfortunately. Sorry. Um, because if you look at the phenomenal distribution, or, or don't you want to, that's what I believe, uh, this strange loss comes comes from. Because otherwise you would think like, oh, why is it like this y times log of plus yeah, one yeah, minus? Yeah, yeah, that's what I would ask. This, this come from. Yeah, where would that yeah, come from? True. But then, that is a linear combination. Wait a minute. Yeah, I kind of. But if you look at the linear distribution, there's something wrong yeah. with this <laughs> because you have log pred twice. So this is just y times something plus one minus y yeah. times something. Isn't that just log pred? I'm missing something here. Maybe I got it wrong. I don't know. I mean, this is log pred, right? So this is y times log pred. Plus one minus y times log pred. Unless I'm missing something, that's just the y's cancel out there. Maybe I got it wrong. 
Did you mean log of one minus pr something or? Because you said this is worki was working, and you did. I thought. Yeah, you was working. Um. Log. I think you mean in the second one log of one minus pred, but okay. Might be. I think I already closed by this point. I don't know, can you not just hmm? Hmm. so I would like to check the Yeah, I don't know, you can continue, I, it takes some time. But you could also look at the denominal, denominal distribution and then figure it out for me. I mean, I know what the binomial distribution is. It's basically the chance that, you know, given a given value of p, it tells you how many, uh, you know, the expected value and the distribution of how many successes you would expect. The logarithm doesn't really show up into that. You maxim you maximize it and you take the log. You minimize the negative log likelihood. Um, again, I <coughs> I just I just don't get it. I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I mean, I think I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to find the best fit matrix. To make these num to make the uh, the error as small as possible. Yes. Um. All right. Let me see if we can figure this out from how just from thinking about it. Uh. So what you do is you compute the sigmoid, which is a hundred numbers. Um. And then somehow, you compute the co you compute the error message, which is you know the error, which is the total cost. Sorry, the total total cost, which is the sum of the errors. And then, based on the errors, you do the backwards function, which tries to get, get a better estimate, right? Yes. The only thing I don't understand is um, how getting the sigmoid values helps you find a better function. I'm taking the derivative? Of what? Of the cost function with respect to W. Oh, um, okay, okay. Um, let's see. So you actually measure the cost function twice, and you look at the difference, and then you basically use like a Newton's approximation to get to where cost would be equal to zero. No, it's not Newton. It's only the first derivative. It's gradient descent. That's I think Newton also takes the second derivative. No. Newton's method takes the first derivative. It's slightly better than the binary method, which takes no derivatives at all. Let's see if I can find yeah, that. That one, I think, that one I think we can find, because I, I know something called the Newton-Raphaelson uh, method. Uh, Raphson method. So this is, what the Newton, this is what the Newton method does. Oh, hang on. Come on. Yeah, so this is what the Newton's method does. It takes the um, it takes the derivative and looks for where that would hit zero. Then it uses that the new derivative where that hits zero. Yes, yes. That's but I think I need for this the second derivative to check where does it hit zero. No. And because it's only it's, it's only using the first derivative. See, it's only taking the point, the slope, and where the slope hits zero. That's it. At no point does it look at the. At no point does it look at the uh, second derivative. It's just the first derivative. It's basically saying if the function were truly aligned instead of only approximately aligned, where would that line become mm. zero? So that's that's what. If that's what you're trying to do, yes, I sort of get it, but. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Hmm. No, that's 
stuff that I'm doing. Okay. So you're looking for minus 1 pred, 1 minus y over 1 minus pred. I mean, I guess I sort of see this, but um, uh, actually, I don't see why that's the derivative. So where are we now? So uh, you take it should be it should be the command and uh, the command. So call up again. Mm -hmm. So here we have here the the change of the loss function. Right, divided by the change of the word is with a chain rule, the <laughs> uh, scroll down a little bit. Okay. I again I'm sure yeah, if you take Okay. If you take the derivative with respect to Y. Oh okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, okay. So wait a minute. I think I maybe understand this now. So y is a is a matrix, right? A three is a one by three matrix. No. You, you can also just for one calculate this. You can also just like for for one. But yeah, yeah, it should be. But I just summed them up. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Nope. What is it? This should be product rule. I still don't understand where you're getting um, this from, because this very clearly factors to log pred. I mean, unless you're seeing something I don't see, uh, wouldn't this just be y of so times something plus 1 minus y of the same thing? Um, yeah, may, maybe I got it wrong. I don't know why. One minus. So now I have the slide on. It says y times log of pet plus one minus y times log one minus pet. So do you want me to put a what one minus in there? Uh, yeah, what, what did I write? Did I get it wrong? You have short log pred both times. Oh, oh, yeah, there, oh, there, yeah. Oh, thanks, see. See, wow, oh, how good I'm at drawing. Yeah, it says actually the log is then log w one minus. Okay, log one mm -hmm. minus pred. So now I'm going to run it again, see if you get what, now what, see what happens yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, let's see what happens there. No, it doesn't look anymore, I guess. No, it oh, does. Okay. It still says estimate. True weights. Oh yeah, because your true oh, weights are now yeah, the same as your original weights. That mm, seems suspicious. Okay, oh, true. Yeah. Okay. So I guess just for my output, I guess the derivative is still correct because I'm just using the cost function uh, for uh, for printing the cost during optimization. Ah, okay. <laughs> still, ah oh, man. Oh, I man. see. I see. Because you're not using the cost function here. You're yeah, computing the cost I'm directly right. on your by yourself. Um, yes. Oh, okay. I forgot I got a mistake. Okay. I'm still really confused by all this. I don't still see what you're doing here. So. So yeah. Now we have to take the calculate the derivative of the cost function with respect to W, which should be using the chain rule. Okay. Wait. 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 Slow down. It says it. It says chain rule. <laughs> I know. I know. But well, give me a sec. Give me a sec. And I think there's oh, a okay. Not give a me a sec. D is also missing there. Okay. 
Can you, okay, give me a second here now. I think I'm getting to almost understand this. So what you're saying is the cost depend. Okay, so your predictions depend on the matrix, right? Yeah. Okay. And when are you we in, in the nope. Okay. Problem. No, no. Where are we? Are we in the strain procedure now? Or I'm or still asking the very basic questions here. Okay. Yeah. W. We want to figure out again. Okay. Because when I call train, I, I initialize okay. a random Okay. Again, matrix. we're just again going matrix randomly into. Yeah. You're just going to be like always twenty minutes ahead. I think. Um. Maybe more. Um. Okay. So we're trying to find the W that minimizes this value here. Sigmoid of X times W. Yeah. Okay, good. I understand. Um, and to do that, what you do is you look at the sigmoid. Um, uh, okay. So you look at the sigmoid function, then you look at the... Um, Okay, so you take the sigmoid function, um, and the sigmoid function is your prediction of what the values will be, right? The sigmoid uh, function. Yeah, but, but I, I, I use a forward thing, yes. Okay, I think I got this now. You want the sigmoid function to eventually be equal to zero. Oh, this could be good. I guess if my loss is zero, right? Well, yeah, that's what you want. You're aiming for getting the loss to be zero. So you have three input variables, the, which are the three um, rows of W. Yes, but if I look up Newton method, then I see like X, the new X is minus the first derivative divided by the second derivative. Oh, where do you see that? Hang on. Right. Hang on. On uh, Newton's method optimization on Wikipedia. Because mm. I think people also kind of like to use this, but calculating the second derivative is kind of expensive. That's why. Yeah, I don't think you need to do it, though. Hang on. Uh, let's see. See, this is what I'm seeing for mm -hmm. Newton's method here. Yeah, this nice animation, right? Um, no, 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 no. I've, I've now brought up in the actual mm -hmm. formulas here. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I think you're thinking of a of a um, of an, an improvement to Newton's method, but Newton's method itself does not involve the second derivative, at least as I mean, look, this is the definition of it right here. Yeah, Newton's method. I I don't see. Divided by. Yeah. yeah, strange. Why does my Wikipedia? You're looking at Newton's method. If you look at it. There's a whole huge. Yeah, I know. They go through yeah, all I sorts know. of improvements to Newton's method here, and that's where you probably are seeing the second derivative. Okay, this might be. Yeah, because I'm on like Newton's method and optimization. Ah, okay, hang on. So let me. Yeah, this is a different article. Uh, here. Oh, wow. The second, this is the second order Taylor expansion. Oh yeah, you're right, wow. Yeah, but I think what they're saying yeah. here is implicitly what happens is that, um, let's see. Oh, you are GT plus zero ten. Well, then you can also look up gradient descent because this is just gradient descent. Okay, so apparently We seek to solve by constructing using sequence. Okay. But people also have other things like conjugate gradient descent. And well, and yeah, but that's actually what people then then use. They actually use momentum based methods. Yeah. For like uh, exponentially chain average, they use and they use square error pop so they kind of 
scale. But this is the gradient. Measure. This is the yeah. gradient method right here. Newton's method on this page, the one I know about, is the gradient method. Yes. Okay. So. Okay, yeah. So you basically look at you don't look at just one derivative. You look at three different derivatives of cost, right? In in each variable. Oh. I yeah, no, I need for W1, W2. Right, 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 right. Bias. Bias? Yeah, yeah, the last one. That's why it um, would be like X1 times W1, X2 times W2 plus B. So oh, right, right, right. Okay, in other words, the constant term that you might need. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's why you add the 1 to the end of your matrix. Yes. For the constant uh, yeah, term. Yeah, I, I just I just take this one because yeah. Because there's no W. That's why you, you multiply this with X. Right. Last, la last step. Okay. I'm still not a hundred percent seeing it, but I'm getting much closer now. Um so just chain rule, derivative of the cost function. No 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 no, no 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 chain rule. Um I think I think it's a chain rule. <laughs> Let's see. You're saying the derivative of this here. Derivative of the sigmoid. Oh. Yeah, I, I just just did it last time actually. Mm. This time I just got down the result, but I mean I think it's just a uh, product rule. If I take again, I don't know what you're taking the different. You're taking the derivative of this, the sigmoid function, or what? Yeah, this is the second one, yes. Uh, that's the, the derivative of the sigmoid function. You can also do this, or also do this. Okay. Because like it's like the derivative of the log times the derivative of the sigmoid function times the derivative of our matrix multiplication. Um, sure. I'm going to pretend that made yeah. sense. Um. I think I'm starting to put it in. Go ahead. And do it by hand, but you can also put it into your program and <laughs> take the derivative. I think you can, though. So, let's see. And so the only part to me that's sort of confusing is why we have a sigmoid function, but I guess that's because we want to, uh, we somehow want to bound yeah. the. Um, the loss between negative one and one. Yeah, that's what then later call the activation function because you have your matrix multiplication, and then you call your activation function. Okay. But but yes, in this one we kind of and and these activation functions bring the nonlinearity. Right, right, but in right. In this case, yeah, we want the want the probability. Okay. And of course, people also use other things. But we're not using probability here because we're not. This is not a classification problem, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's kind of like a regression problem now. But I could say for my created cases, I could say that if it's smaller than zero point five, I can put it to class zero, and otherwise to class one. That's what I usually would do. Okay. But I, then I. Then, then I figured I don't get the weight, and then I was like, nah, it's really smart. Okay. So I'm going to try to convert this into Mathematica. I'm looking at it to make sure I sort of understand it. Um, uh, well, I guess yeah, I mean, it doesn't it's seem enough. that difficult. No, 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 you can't do it. It's just product rule. No, no, no product rule. Um, Th these are these product. are these are partial derivatives. They're not product rule derivatives. Yeah, last time I did this. Mm -hmm. um, unless I'm missing something. This is I don't see where the product rule is coming in here. That's the problem. Can I like write some block? Okay. Block. Let me see if I can find my Mathematica. Log one minus x. So now I want to take the derivative with back to y. So this should be okay. This is not the good. Did I lose my? I might have lost my other one. Um, which is sad because it had some good stuff in it. 
Um, wow. Um, wow. I could have sworn I had saved that one. Actually, I probably didn't save that one, knowing me. Well, that's annoying. Um, uh, Alright, well, we'll just do a new one. I really need to start saving shit. Okay. So, what you wanted to do here was... Let me check something here real quick. So we just take with respect to the activation, then we have the derivative of log of a is one over a, right? Yeah. All right, great. Because see, with the product rule, when you have y times log of a, it's like. Hang on. Y. Uh, I'm. Y. Times the derivative of log of a. Which is one We're over a. We don't need to. Plus this is. We can do. This <laughs> will. This will do derivatives all by itself. So okay, that's not the problem. We can do this. Okay. And then we take the derivative of y, which is one times. Wait, that's one. No. Wait, what did I get first? One should fall away. Okay, we're not. We're not. We're just gonna try to. One times. We're, you don't need to do the derivative manually here. Okay. So what we want to do here is get 100 numbers, which you did as random, random, right? Uniformly distributed random numbers. I mean, the, ri the result should be minus y over a plus 1 minus. Again, we're not there yet? Okay, so you just got a bunch of data, like this, right? Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And then you wanted to add, okay. So you wanted to add the one, so you had sort of a base, um, you had sort of a, a base, uh, a bias that you wanted. Okay, so. Yes, the other thing. So now we'll use an example matrix, which is, just for fun, this matrix. So we can take this matrix, which is our guess matrix, um, on the x values of the data, is that correct? Yeah, but could just take the derivative. Mm. Oh, but no, because you've set x over here to be just the first column of this two column matrix, right? Uh, what is the first column? See, okay, so you start off with a, um, okay, let's go ahead and go back into R real quick. Okay, so you start off with, this is just a 200 element matrix, uh, 200 element list, right? Yeah. Then this, this turns it into a, um 100 by 2 matrix right mm -hmm. and this selects the first column of that matrix uh, no I, s I oh, say oh 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 this adds another row to the matrix number of columns guide gotcha i got yeah, it yeah then c gotcha. c by yeah i got gotcha. you okay that's what that does okay so we need our data to function here um, okay, now I'm beginning to see why you wanted to do it that way. Okay, I see what you're doing. Uh, so we can just pretend there's a one here, like you said. So I'll give you that. Okay, so this is a data function that has 100 rows, three columns, and a matrix which has one row and three columns. So if I do this, this won't work. 
This should not work. Um, but it does. Um, so data is 100 rows by three columns. And this is, this should not, this should not work though. Hang on. Um, if I take a 100 by 3 matrix, I should not be able to multiply it by a 1 by 3 matrix. The only thing I'm, s oh, uh, you know what, I think because it figures out that this is going to be a, um, a column matrix. So I think this is actually okay. So, so I take data, so, blah, blah, blah. so I take data, multiply it by matrix, and I get these 100 numbers, right? I guess, I don't know. Um, which, if you think about it, is 0.2 times the x value. No, 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 no. 0.1 times the y value minus point now. Shit. I'm confused as to why this is even working. Um, uh, so mat is 1 times 3, and this is 100. This should not e work either. Yeah, okay, good. That one didn't work. So it's it correctly realized these things don't have the right shape. So I guess this works just by magic somehow. It knows that I'm, you're supposed to treat the second thing as a uh, as three rows in one column, not three columns in one row. So th this works. Now you want to define your sigmoid function. And let's see how you did that here. One over one plus, okay. Um, I think that's what you did. Let me double check. 1 over 1 plus x per minus c. Okay, good. That's your sigmoid function. And so what you want to do is you want to apply the sigmoid function to data times mat. Uh, and then you want to take the sum of these numbers and divide by 100 to get your total error. And you want the a you want the mean of these numbers. You want the average of these numbers essentially. The average of the sigmoid values. Mm -hmm. Am I correct in saying that or am I totally off by now? Well, now we have our prediction. Right. The sigmoid is our prediction, right? Well, wait. No, it's not. The sigmoid is our error me is our error me measure, right? No. 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 The error is uh, this. This thing here. Empty. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. Um, so the error measure, the pred here is the the sigmoid function, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Yes. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we got it. Okay. So this is, so sorry, we don't need to take the mean of this or anything. We take sigmoid data mat, um, and this is our prediction values of what y should equal. Yeah. Okay, good deal. Uh, we need to subtract it from the actual y values, right? I mean, we could, we could define the square laws, but... Oh, right, 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 okay, okay. So these are the prediction values. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. These are the prediction values, and now we need to compare them to the real values, but we need to perform some function on them that tells us what the loss is between the prediction and the actual. Yeah. Okay. So we can say loss pred actual equals... And you were using uh, 
this sucker here. Okay, so the um, it's going to be actual times log of pred plus one minus actual times log of one minus pred. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I mean, that's this is the function you. I have left the tail. So yeah, let's I just. Think it's from the let's nominal distribution. Well, and we put a the we only put a minus in front. Okay. A minus in front. What do you mean? Yeah, because we're minimizing the negative log likelihood. So we're maximizing the likelihood. That's why there was a minus sign, which almost. So where do you want my, where do you want the minus sign? Just before. Maybe we could put it into brackets and then just. Oh, the minus you want the negative of the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So the loss, if you have 0.5 and 0.5, we would expect a loss of zero, correct? Because that's an exact measurement. I guess when both are equal, we would like to have no loss at all. Hmm. Right, is that correct? I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, I just checked. I just did, and it's not. Oh, here it is. The loss there is 0.693147. That does not seem correct. Yeah, okay, let's just roll with it. What do you mean let's roll with it? This should be a loss of zero. Mm -hmm. If the predicted and the actual values match, we should not have a, we should have zero loss. I mean, the problem here is if I put like a 0.6 in here, oh, hang on, this is giving me the same numbers every time, which is, conf which is not good. Um, okay, something's wrong here, obviously. Okay, that's a big loss there. I don't know. There's something wrong with your, I don't think your loss function is that good. So actual yeah. times log of pred plus one minus actual times log of, you know what, let me, let me, I think your, the, your loss function simplifies to something it's not supposed to simplify to. Let's see what this is. Um, okay, that doesn't look too bad. Let's see if that simplifies any. Let's see if that simplifies any if we assume A and P are both real. Hmm. Okay. So what are we getting at? I'm just trying to figure out what your loss function is for a two set, two given values. And apparently it's supposed to be okay. All right, I'm confused though, whoa. Yeah, I have to figure this out. But I mean, I think we're using the probability density function of the denominal distribution we want to maximize the likelihood. I don't know, I have to look into that, so many things. I mean, the problem here is I'm saying if I say loss of 0.2, 0.2, I would expect to see zero there. Maybe. But maybe I mean, not. is that... What are you actually seeing? Okay, hang on. Let's do this then. Da -da -da. Yeah, this is a dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, see the problem here is the loss of 0.2 comma 0. Uh, let's just put it out here. I think that's going to be 0, which is probably not what you want. Hmm. 
And now it's not zero, but it's it's point two. Okay, this I don't think this is the correct loss function. Hang on. Um, I don't I don't know what you mean by log likelihood of the binomial function. Okay. Um, I think I have a thing over that. Let's take a look. See if we can find it here. I mean, I always wonder how. The only the best explanation that I get. I have to call it NGNG. <laughs> but I, but it kind of makes sense. I, I think. Okay, so you're saying the loss function. Should not be zero, right? Self, because it's the number of successes of the claim, blah, blah, blah. Again, I need to see the blah, blah, blah there. I'm just in Wikipedia. Okay. Well, it just makes sense because then I, I guess I end up with this loss function and I put up and have the negative sign because I want to maximize the. Well, the negative sign is not what's throwing us off. What's throwing me off here is the. Um, <coughs> okay, so here's what's throwing me off. Your loss of mm. point 0.2 and 0 is smaller than your loss of point 0.2, point 0.2, which, according to this, means estimating point 0.2 as 0 is better than estimating point 0.2 as point 0.2, which doesn't make sense to me. Does that make sense? Uh, I need to think about it. I don't really see how you're getting your loss function is the problem. Can you work me through the binomial uh, distribution that you're using? Oh, not really. OK. Kind of stuck then, because I'm pretty sure the loss function should measure the loss, and the closer you are to the um, to the actual value, you know, the closer the prediction is to the actual value, the smaller the loss function should be. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, do you want to continue with this, or shall we abandon ship here? I don't know. It depends on you. I thought. I mean, I I want to figure I this out, but I I don't I don't see what you're do. I don't yeah, see yeah. how your loss function is measuring the actual loss. I mean, I, I is that is this correct somehow? It is correct. Okay. It's from the lecture slide. Okay. But um, I wonder if you meant to say one minus pred here and pred here. That would be more symmetric. Nope. That doesn't even help either. So I guess my question is, shouldn't the loss function be equal to zero if pred is equal to actual? I don't know. You don't know. You, you don't think the loss, we're trying to hit a total cost of zero, right? Mm. And the cost is the sum of the losses, right? So for the and and all the losses are positive numbers, right? I would assume so. So if you have a sum of num positive numbers that's close to zero, then each of those numbers must be close to zero as well. Uh, 
subscribe for the next time. Okay, so so we're giving up now. I could also just use the basic linear function, actual minus pred squared. You can indeed. So let's try that. And there we will at least have the expected that zero is zero. Okay. That if there's if they're equal, they're zero. So that now, the sigmoid function is this. And now you want the sigmoid function of data dot mat. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I want to minimize the. Uh, well, the sigmoid function. Uh, these are our predictions, right? Or no? What are these? Yes, 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 yes. These are the predictions. Uh, okay. So in order to compare the predictions, what are these the predictions of? Just each x value? Yes. Okay. Well, so the y value we right. find seven here. Right, right. It gives you the y value for given x values. I don't really see how you're getting that because I mean, to me the uh, the y values would be the the matrix times the x values. But you're saying these are the these are the predictions of the y values for the x values in order that they are in data. We're trying to, f okay, so we have this matrix that we say pr is a predictor. Yeah. And, okay, I and see. You can also use like one <laughs> half of the squared error because when you take the derivative. Stop, the stop, stop, error. stop, stop, stop. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're taking 0.2 times x plus 0.1 times y minus 0.21 period, right? Yes. And we're hoping to make that as close to zero as possible, right? What is so the squared error now? Um no no, I'm just talking about in general. What we're trying to do is we're trying to multiply this matrix that we have here um by the data and we're trying to get as close to all zeros as possible. No, this is our, uh, these are the true red. This we just generated to generate the latest result, and we want to figure out these values again. And all right, 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 right. But values. when we get them absolutely correct, we would expect that when we do data times mat, we would get all zeros or no. Data times mat. Yeah. When we multiply the data. Well, our loss, our loss should be zero because our right. actual values equal the prediction. But I think the problem here is this is not a prediction matrix. This is a matrix that takes x and y and a constant. And yeah. it returns, I think you're going to get data times mat equals zero, to be honest. I think that's what you're trying to do. Well, if it's equal to zero, that means 0.2x plus 0.1y minus 0.1 equals zero, and then you have x and y in terms of each other. Because you only have one input here, and here you have three numbers, wh one of which is a, is a bias, the other two of which are multiplied by x and y. So I think I got this down now. You want matrix times data to be equal, data times matrix to be equal to all zeros. Uh, so what we do here is we take the, uh, we don't need the sigmoid function anymore. I think I got this, at least a simple version of this. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, but then you, you have just the regression. Well, yeah. I mean, you can use but gradient descent. But, but, but let's, let's, go go let's go ahead and actually, let's thing. get this working first, and then we'll figure out what your sigmoid stuff is. So this is just data times mat. We oh want to okay, apply yeah. the, uh, we want to apply the loss function to this, but actually we don't even need to do that because the loss function, we simply square all of these numbers uh, and add them and divide by 100. So, so 
and I said we wanted to take one half. W no, we don't. Square. Why? I said I don't know. Because when you take to the derivative, the two times one front, and they cancel out, and get one half. We haven't done it. Okay, so this is the difference between the matrix and zero, and then we sum this up. I think actually we have to say total here to get this to work. Okay. All right. So what we're going to say now is the error value of W0, W1, and B for bias. Uh, actually, let's not do that. Let's say is equal to beta dot. This makes sense to me. I don't know if it's I'm doing anything with neural networks anymore, but this to me makes <laughs> sense. That it, it is kind of neural network, but then you don't have the activation function. Yeah, but right now let's see if we can get even this working. Okay. Ooh, that's ugly. Yeah. Okay, so if you give error, so if you have three parameters, this tells you what the um, what the error met the error is. So if we do error of 0 0.2, 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1, we should get three point something like we did. Oh, whoa. Okay. Let's change this now to point 0.1. Uh, C plus extend. Ah, uh, uh, wait, we need somewhere a minus. We just have C plus then the multiplication, and then we have our prediction. So then minus y and then squared. Nah, nah, nah. I think I know. What See, the issue here is if you have a matrix with three elements in it, you're multiplying by, and you've added this 1 to the whole thing, you're basically getting x times 0 0.2 plus y times 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 as a, as, a, as a constant. So so now what you can do, um, is you can take the derivative of this, with respect to, this is going to be very ugly though, Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to say D is in the derivative, but okay. But this is just ugly, because this is just hideous. Um, so what we want to do here is... Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So the... So we first have the error message as compared to the error values com for these three that we just chose randomly. And now we want to get the, um, so we'll set dt equal to 0 0.1 or something. And then the, um, then the partial derivative with respect to the first variable is just going to be that. Sorry, over dt, I meant to say. One second. Um, I'm sorry, this, these should all be, d these should both be dt's. Okay. So what this tells me here is the derivative with respect to the first variable is 8.15. Okay. Um, and then we can get the derivative with respect to the second variable. We can get all three variables actually. So let's. So the second variable is 1.2 plus the second variable is the one that changes then. And then in the third case, the third variable is the one that changes, and the bias in this case. And if I've done this correctly, this should give us the three partial derivatives 
with respect to the weight and the bias. Okay. Um, okay, so now the way we could fix this, obviously we'd have to create an iterative process here. Uh, we know that the current value is 0 0.67, blah, 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 blah. To, if we had a derivative of 8, we just need to drop by 0 0.67 over that value. Um, okay. So I guess we could adjust each of these values to account for a third of the error or something. Okay. I think I see how you, I mean, I think I see what you're doing here, but I'm not, I'm still not really seeing it. Do you really have a good explanation of this or no? Uh, that you calculate the gradient and just oh. multiply the gradient as a small number and you take a step of the direction. Yeah. Basically, I took the gradient and I added, um, I did, you know, uh, x plus dt, x minus dt, subtracted and divided by 2 times dt. That's like the definition of the derivative. So, and then the idea would be that you would use these derivatives to try to get rid of this 0.67 error that you know about. I guess. But this is not how you were doing it at all. This is very different from what you were doing. No, this is when you have the derivative. Oh, okay. Um, with respect to W of your error, then you can just take a small step into this direction to minimize the error. Right. But we have three different derivatives now. So does each of them try to account for one third of the error, or how do we do that? No, no. <coughs> we have three derivatives because we have um, three weights in our matrix. Correct. So which one do we change to try to get rid of this 0.67? Uh, all three. So do we change them all to get rid of one third of that 0.67, or what? We can't adjust, if we adjust all three of them, we'll go too far in the other direction. No, we, we, s we have the gradient and we multiply it with a small constant, which is called the learning rate, which I set to 0 0.1 or something like that. Oh, oh, I see. And then, so the total correction. Yeah, it, ca it, ca it, can ha it can happen that you overshoot and then wiggle and then, then right. you have to tune your learning rate. You have to make smaller, yeah. Okay. Okay. In a for loop. Right, until you get a, f until you get a, um, an error, an error that's very, very small. Mm, yeah, I just check for convergence if uh, your gradient. Right. Oh no, actually, yeah, I, ch I calculated the cost, and then I, if my cost doesn't change, then I say, oh, it's converged. Oh, right, right. In other words, you can't make the cost has reached your local minimum. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we could do that. The problem here, I'm thinking, is uh, obviously we have random data, so this is not going to help us very much. I mean, we're going to end up with a very ugly, the cost, the minimum cost is still going to be pretty high. Right? Uh, wh why, why is the cost high if we do it in a for loop? And no, no, because our data itself is very random. There is no good straight line fit to our data. <coughs> oh. Um, is the no, we should get a perfect fit, shouldn't we? We didn't add noise. No, no, but X times our parameter gives us Y. Let's try it. I think we should get Zero. No, we but should get them. but data is not the our data is not a straight line, and with the matrix that we have, the best we can hope for is a straight line, right? No, but there's like a linear relationship between x and cross matrix, mm. and we are estimating the linear relationship. No, so I don't think there is. But let me let me show you. I'm gonna list. Yeah, we have like a point cloud that this should get mapped to a line, shouldn't it? No, here's what our yeah, here's what our data looks like. Same. Oh, hang on, that's yeah. not that's not what I meant to do. Sorry. <sighs> I mean, 
it's like n times x plus c. But it's not, right? Because yeah. our data, it's just a bunch of random points in two-d two-dimensional space. Yeah, but we have we have. Um, uh, I think I should write just fine. <laughs> what do you think we're going to get out of this? Because we have so many physics tests. Um, I don't. I don't think we do. Let's try now. Okay, hang on one second. Let me let me show what our data looks like. He says what I think our data looks like. Let me take a look here. Okay. So if I plot this, I'm, you're going to see it basically a scatter plot because it's all random. I mean, you can think about it in 1D if I just there. do it in 1D. It should be a line. Is this a line? I guess in multidimensional, it should be a plane or something like that. Mm, this is... Three loops. Uh, oh, because you're saying these are all in the x, y, one plane. Okay. Okay, yeah, these actually might be in a plane. Good point. All right. Mm. No, that still is not going to, well, let's see. Why now not? We have x times w equals y and we are just estimating the best w. fit correct but you know we know we know we know our w how did you change too much we know that w is going to be effectively zero this li this scatter has no ha has no slope no we don't want to to be our w is um zero we want to figure them out but we know the true value what is the true value of w Mat. What? Mat. What, what we defined on top. You are you, you you see the graph I'm looking at now, right? Yeah, it should be just slight, slight here. This is not a line. Mm. There is no. What did you just yeah. Write down uh, f x times w equals y, and then we initialize a different, and we have x and y. And we just initialize a random W, and then we do our gradient descent to mm -hmm. find the original W, which but there is no there is no original W. Okay, we need to go up now. What do you think our original W is? The one we created the Y values with. We cr but they're random. No, Y is not random. Mm -hmm. X is random. Look at the table. Yeah. So we generated our data. Did we multiply them with mat? With and then what? we have y. I think Maybe this is not the data you wanted. I think, I think you wanted no. random x's, and then you wanted m times those x's plus b. Yeah. And then yeah. we would get that back. Is the idea? Yes, we get our the, the parameters back. Yeah. That's what I think you wanted. Um, yeah. This is going to give us nothing useful. This is going to give us even the best fit line to this scatter plot is going to be a very poor fit. Yes. So, so I was going to ask you, how do you get it to fit like a function, like a sine function that if you didn't know what it was? Oh, uh, can you can you go back to the R code? Sure. Can we just ac accept that is uh, this is the math function? Yeah, I don't I don't think we're doing what we think we're doing. No. So can we just go through the code and then? Um, I'll go to the train function. That's interesting. Well, I think I understand. Your train function just looks at the derivative, right? Yes. And it you just does a does a Newton yes. Raphson approximation until you get the you costs. Oh, I see. Until your 
cost change by less than 10 to the negative 8. Yeah, that's just, just uh, except this is the logistic loss function. So then we have our forward step where we do x times w and t the signal, which is our prediction. Then I just print the cost for fun. Then we do our backward step, which is calculating the gradient with respect to our parameter. Okay, so I have several problems with this. First of all, you see the true weights are these, yeah. right? Minu point 0.1, minus point 0.2, and point 0.1? Yes, correct. And then I initialize W2, which are random weights, because we initialize the layers of our neural network, we initialize randomly. It's random weights. Then we do a prediction. Correct. And then but, but, th but, but these aren't the true weights. If you look at your X matrix here, this is just random, right? Yes, it's random data, but, but I don't care. Right. Because I'm interested in W. This is like data that was given. X and Y are, right. uh, I don't know, someone, someone gave me the data. The but they're random. For, for in, this, in this problem, they're random though, right? Yes, because I'm only interested if I get my Ws back, if I did the correct... But there is no W. You have no Ws to start with. No, I don't have a W to start with. That's correct. So there's no because W to I recreate. Just, just do this. To, yeah, that's, that's why I use random W to initialize my algorithm. That's not what I mean. I, I mean, your original data is not aligned. We just assume that there's like a linear relationship. And but there isn't. Lapses between we just assume. But there isn't, right? This is just for one layer of a neural network. This is like you can consider it like the simplest neural network. That's how we start. Right. But, but then we can But there's no can weights to get back. There's no correct answer here, right? But if we have X and want to predict Y, we need to to estimate some function. But X and Y are random, right? They have no relation to each other. Yes, but it could be like we assume there is a relation. We assume that oh if we know X we can predict Y if we know like some data about fish, we can say if it, I don't know, if it eats other fish or... Right, right, right. But I'm saying in this specific case that you're creating here, we don't even know what the relation is between X and Y, right? Yes, that's true. But so... It's just for demonstration. Right, right, right. But then when, so when we get our answer back, we expect the error to be still pretty, the cost to be still pretty high, right? No, we want the cost to be low. Okay. Can we print the cost that's out that's here? What, that's why we minimize. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're doing optimization. You see uh, how, how the cost. Right. So the cost gets change. down to 0.69211527. Yeah. And it starts off at. Point. Okay. So basically, you get some cost improvement here, but after the fifth step you get very little cost improvement yes and so you have a this is a very poor fit right these are not the true weights but anyway this estimate here of the, the three numbers is a very poor estimate right because the cost is still very high uh, <coughs> I mean we get pretty close to the true parameters because we didn't have noise we have the perfect data it is, no no it no, is no we didn't these are not the true parameters this is just your first guess no the true parameters are one uh, point zero point one minus, and then there's my estimate. Okay, wait. You're saying the true parameters in the original data are zero point one minus point two and point one? Yes, because I created the data. You created the data <laughs> as random numbers, though. Yes, but I also created the y's, and I, I as used also random. To create the y's. No, you didn't. Where did you do that? Wait. What? What did I do? Look at, is, and look at line one through yes, five. X, 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 X is random. In seven, I set my weights. And in, in, in 12, I create the, the labels, the Y values. Oh. Really? And yeah, in, in line 12, signal is X times W. So wait a minute. So in line five, what do we have? Why are you taking the 100 element matrix and splitting five? into... Yeah. Five doesn't matter. S seven matters. Yeah, set my weights. Generate the data. And at 12, I generate the, the labels. 
Okay, yeah, wait. Yeah, talk about data, I, I mean like X and Y. Okay, wait. What are you doing in yeah, line something. five then? Line five? I just create a matrix because this previously was an a array. It, this doesn't matter. Yeah, I think the si your sigmoid fun you're saying you're using your sigmoid function to generate Y? Yes, of course, in line 12. Okay, I, I thought you were... Right, it's not random. Okay, well that would make sense, actually. Um, yes, because otherwise I would... would I, I, I don't know if it works. No? <laughs> but I still don't see... See, this is the problem that I'm having here. Okay. Yeah. We're starting off with 100 values of X, right? Yes. But they don't matter. Well, they, they, they're just random, but okay. So there are these. But for some reason, then, in line 5, you split X into two columns. I don't know why you're doing that. Because to me, what you have because here now... Uh, yeah, because I want, like, two features. I want, like, my data has, like, two... Oh. I don't know, if he has a fever and if he has a cough. And then I, I get it. Okay, okay. I anyway. see. I get it now. So you're saying you have okay. two input variables and one output variable. Yes. Wow. Okay. God <laughs> damn, that was confusing. Um, okay, I guess I'm off to the side. Okay. Okay, I now I get it. This. Now I get it. Well, so. Picture, yeah. Okay, so now I get it. You have two input variables, and the output variable you're trying to predict is this linear combination of the two, sig and then you apply the sigmoid function to it. Yes. Okay. I gotcha. So. The sigmoid function has nothing to do with the error function. No. Okay. Oh, this was a correct answer. Just gonna throw it down. So. So you predict your y values, and then you. Yeah, just have to set up. Just I generate my data so I know the ground truth, and then then more or less the algorithm you will start. Oh, I see what you're doing. Your z is, is equal to the... So your z here is your y here. Um, yes, 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 I guess. It's just the name of the parameter. Mm, I'm con I think you're using sigmoid in two different... Why are you sigmoidifying your final yeah, parameter. Yeah, yeah, look, we can z, because he uses this notation, z is x, y, x plus b, and then this is the, um, the, at the activation I apply my function, and then I calculate the log, which is this. So then, then you take, for the, right, this is just a forward step, so I calculate z with x, w, x plus b, but b I put into the matrix, which is this column with all ones. ones, right? Then I find my sigmoid. Okay. All right. So okay. let's and then let's and then I, okay. okay. Let's. I think I'm getting this at last. So you have. Um, I guess then there's also still this mistake on on the command. So I think oh, I'm oh, finally getting this now. Uh -huh. You have two chunks of 100. Well, you have 50, but I'll go and make them 100 of random numbers. And then your data is these two numbers as input. Um, so the ith element of that, the ith element of this. Uh, and then the third column is like um, your some function of x1 and x2, right? Yeah, I guess. Isn't that what you're doing? Yes. yes, of course. This is x times w plus b. But I added it to the matrix. No, it's... N oh. No, somehow the sigmoid function comes in, though. I don't understand that. After the matrix has been changed. Yeah. So, your z values, or your y values, are you combine these two yeah. linearly, you combine the first two, these two yeah. columns linearly, and then you apply a sigmoid function for some reason. Why do you apply a sigmoid function? I mean, for this, because uh, it's, a, it's just a logistic regression. Yeah, but I'm... And if we go later to the picture that I drew, 
then this would be like the activation function, what they call a neural network like activation function. What does that mean though? Nothing, we get at nonlinearity. Okay, but I, I guess I don't understand. Are your z values linear combinations of x1, x2, and uh, constant? Yes. Okay, but then, so these are not your z values because you put a sigmoid in front of this for no, some reason. That's then called a. Say that again? But in this case, this would be then a, like the activation. In, in right, in right, 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 right. So you're. Doesn't mean, but in this case, because it's just one layer of a neural network. So this would be then also my prediction already. I don't get it. It's just, it's just a logistic regression. It doesn't matter. I don't get so it. So this is my prediction for y. And then I have the error. What is the error? That's the logistic loss function. Okay, where are your z values? Z would be x times w cubed plus Right. Uh, yes. Then the, the, I mean, I read the com comments afterwards. I thought that would be helpful, but apparently they're not. Well, it looks like what you did was you, you're combining steps, though, right? I want to see your z values by themselves somewhere so I know what it is you're trying to match. So no, your z values. I just think they're not. Hmm? Yeah, can we just go to the train thing and then. Yeah, but, but this is not cool. I mean, you cannot. You have to give your z values somewhere for comparison. You can't just apply sigmoid to them ahead of time. <coughs> yeah, I just create my part my labels. I mean, I, I don't I get can, but why would I? Because it's important. That's the data that we're looking for, right? No, we're looking for w. Right. But we know W. No, we just used this to create the data. Right, 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 right. Let's go to W. Let's go to train. But where is <laughs> where? But your data isn't here anywhere, right? Where is my data? No. Your data would be X times W, right? No. No. My data is X and Y. Right, right, right. But but the but the Y values. The y values of your the, the final third column, the output of your data of your in your input matrix would be x times w, right? No. no. Input into my neural network would be x. Then then just go go no. on the picture that I drew. Oh god no. The three hundred dimension picture? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh god no. Yes, I, I don't think okay, I'm one. you might be yeah, like I mean usually usually would go through this first and then I would say like, see like, oh wow, this is one layer of a neural network and then you can just put them up to each other. But I'm not and trying to do that. No. I'm still trying to figure out the one layer and I think the problem I'm having here is I don't, your input data is, your training data is X, Y, and Z, right? No, my input data is X. Okay. This I put into the your into training my your training data. Regression. You cannot just think about the regression problem. I have my x's and I want my y's, and then I want the w's. Just okay. Simple regression. But okay, your training data, the data you're putting into the matrix to train it, is has three columns, and there's fifty columns, fifty rows of three columns each. <coughs> it should be. Two columns. Okay, of input and one column of output. <laughs> yeah, it should be a s yes. And the one column of output is point 0.1 times the first column plus point minus point 0.2 times the second column plus point 0.1. Yes, and then put it into the sigmoid. That's Wha the why output. do you put it into... Okay, so then the output is the sigmoid of that. Yes. Not the value itself. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. You, what your training data does or doesn't have sigmoid in it? Training data doesn't have sigmoid. It's like data, and I, I design a model to predict the y's given the x. 
well, there's two X's, right? X1 and X2? Mm. Well, there's only one X, which has, like, two columns. Well, okay, but the the input is two values, right? Yes. Okay. And, and the output is one value. The output is one value that's a linear combination of the two columns and a constant. Yeah. Where does sigmoid come into that? You have to apply it there. Why? <coughs> to scale it. That's because. So your then input... The model, the model I think you're still confused. You're still jumping steps, I think. Your input data, you're saying that the the output, your training data's output is not a linear combination of your input data. It is. Then but why I'm are you sigmoiding it? Function. So why are you implying why a sigmoid function? Why not? Because sigmoid makes it nonlinear, right? I guess that's what the tell you. So why are you I doing that? Scales it, scales it nicely between zero and one. Okay, but your training data, you can't guarantee that the output is between zero and one, right? No, then I would design a different model. It can be a class. It can be like, oh, is it a cat? Is it a dog? What kind of flower? Right. You can also but use regression space. But, but why, why are you applying sigmoid to your input data? I don't get it. I think you're skipping a step here. No. Okay. So, so I want so some logistic regression for whatever reason. Yes. That's, that's how we also in introduce it in this class. And then he says like, oh, we can consider this as one layer of a neural network. Okay. I still don't understand what your training data is. X. And the output is one. Okay. Target label or whatever. Okay, okay. But the output is the sigmoid function of a linear combination of x's, of the two val input yes. values. Yes. But how do you know that your input data, input data looks like that? Mm, I'm given the data. And Correct. It's just, um, I don't mean if it has more dimensions, then I can just have more W's. Right. Because it's just what's left there. Right. I still don't understand where you're using the sigmoid. I don't see how that, how you can, your original data, how can you guarantee that it has a sigmoid in there? I can't. Okay. That's what I want to do it now. Okay, so, but so you want to, so you're going to ignore your input data? For now, yes. So you're you're ignoring your training data. I just wanted to implement a logistic regression. But I want to. I'm talking. I want to see what your training data is first, and you can't do that. Then, then you would design a model. I mean, it could be an image. I mean, it's just. I thought your training model regression. was. Okay, I thought your it's training model was two columns of input and a linear combination yes. of the two columns as output. Yes. Yes. But then you put sigmoid on top of it, so it's not linear anymore. Yes. So I'm confused. I think I thought I saw what you were doing, but I don't see how sigmoid can be part of your training set. To me, that's something you would do after you have your training set. Mm -hmm. But no. Just scroll down <laughs> to the training, <coughs> the training function. No, no, I still want to understand what your input data is. X. Okay, what's your training data then? X. And there's no Y in your training data. There is Y. What is Y? The output, the label. The 
target load here. Right, and that's not a linear combination of your x's. Why not? Because you put because you're putting sigmoid in front of all of this crap. Um, <coughs> well, it actually was because I generated the data and. Yeah, where is your data? Is what I'm asking you. X and Y. Where's uh, so you're saying the Y in line twelve is your output data? Yes. Even yeah. though it has a sigmoid function okay. in it. The target layer, yes. That doesn't make that's any sense. Why, do, why would it not make sense? That's, that's a function that generated the data. I, I wrote it. <laughs> right. <coughs> I generated the data. OK, so you're generating data that is not a linear combination. Yes. Your data is not a linear combination of x and y. <laughs> of, sorry, yeah. of x. I don't know why you're doing it. So this is what you, you're trying to get back the function 1 over 1 plus exp. No, I want to get the matrix w. I don't know. We're talking about the I think what you're doing is you're not, you're not, you have no place where you're saying that x times w, I mean, you're saying it right here in line 14, but there's no place where you compute that. Wait. Fort is it's a comment in line. Also in line 12. Yes, it's also like that. No, you it's just not. The comment. <laughs> you just well, it is. No, see. P is uh, the columns of R1. It, it's like 0.1 as P. Right. But what I'm not seeing is how come there's no place in your code where you're defining line, there's no place in your code where you have line 14. No, but I don't need it. Yes, you do. You need, because I want to see it. I want to see what your freaking model oh. looks like. And you're putting a sigmoid on it before we look at it. Uh, I so I think that's where I'm stuck on your problem. I'm saying you ha there's no place in your code where you actually show me what your training set is. X is the input. Right. You, you don't you don't need z. Usually you have x and y. Wh and what's y? What's y? Oh, y. Uh, I mean, y is line twelve, right? The sigmoid, not the not the linear combination. <coughs> it's y. No. <sighs> so someone's giving you training data that is not a linear com where the output is not a linear combination of the inputs. Yes, but I just generated test data. Right, but it's not a linear combination. Yeah. I thought you said it was a linear combination. I mean, X and W is linear. Yes, the but the output, but the output is not. Okay, what we want. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The the output is not a linear combination of X and of the x i's. Yeah. Yeah. I'm confused. Because I thought what you were saying yeah. here was your uh, output was was this matrix here. This is the true matrix that you fed in as training data. What is the true? I, I fed in x, x, x i p. You didn't feed in any output values. What? Just go to train. No, no. You gave it a training set of data, right? No, I generated. I just generated right. test data. I'm trying to and understand. To I'm trying to figure out what your test data doesn't is. It doesn't matter. I want to know what it is. So I want to. I, I want to find W. Yes. I take X and Y, and I want to find W. That's what I want. Somehow you generated a training desk, uh, a training uh, set of data, right? Mm -hmm. Where can I see that training set of data, please? X and Y. And Y is the sigmoid function. No, Y is a matrix. It's a hundred by one matrix. Maybe you're confused by R. Maybe. Maybe 
it means something different in but I mean but you're saying line uh, 12 you're saying line 12 dis defines your uh, y matrix no, no, it, doesn't, it doesn't define it gives me uh, 100, 100 values Okay. So 100 by 1, numerical matrix. Maybe you're confused by the... No, no, I understand what you're saying. I'm just confused because you're saying two different things. One is your training data has input X and output that is a linear combination of X. But at the same time, it's not a linear combination of X because you take a sigmoid function which delinearizes it. Okay, then we say it's not linear. It's not a linear relationship. It's an X. Okay, there's not a linear relationship then. In your training data... You have x, y, and z. Uh, sorry, you have x, 1, x, 2, and y, and y is not a linear combination of x, 1, and x, 2. Okay, yes. Okay. But you're trying to find w1 and w2 such that, and w3, I guess. And w3, yes. Such that, so you're trying to get, I hope That's this is. Right, I like that. Yeah. You're trying to get. Is this correct? Oh, you need to use a different character for command. Say again? Different character for command. It's like with hash text type and everything. Oh, the yo, right, got it, got it, got it. <coughs> like yes. that. No, but yeah, but when it's Y, then you need to put a sigmoid around it, right? Because we just said it's not linear. Oh, so your input set is actually the sigmoid of a linear combination of the input. Yes? The labels, it's like output. I'm confused because you said input. Oh, right. I mean, I got all this. Kind of off. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, still think, I still think the only thing you're doing wrong is sigmoid is your first step in trying to find the W's, it's not your last step in generating the training set. I generate the training set and then of course um, I use the same model to, to for my prediction. Uh, no, I'm, I'm confused here. Are you saying, is my line nine I mean, look, look at look at forward. I mean, this is not why, because if you put like sigmoid of this, then it's why. Obviously. So you're looking, so but nine. okay, okay. So I guess okay. So you're given the set of data that has input and output, right? Is that correct? Mm. Training what data. Yes, yes, yes. In an output, yes. So Don't somehow, somehow you know that your output is 1 over 1 plus e to the minus linear combination of the inputs? Yes. How do you know that? That's a very weird thing to know. Because I generated the data. Yeah, but you didn't know that. I mean, you, you remember this is, we generated the data, we're cheating, but we're just given the set of data mm. that we know nothing about yeah, except that it has input and uh, output. Just, just, just roll with it, just roll with it. Just do just what? Uh, roll? <laughs> R-O-L-L? -L? No. Yeah. I can't accept that because this makes no sense. If you already know what form your data is going to be in, why, why even bother with this? The whole point is you're given this data, you don't know where it comes from. You need to find a function that fits it. Yes, and that's what we want to do. That's why we want to find the Ws. Right, but, but why do we get the but signal? Maybe we see that the y values have to be between 0 and 1. And so why not use a sigmoid? But they can't, uh, we can't do that. These are input values. We're given data. We can't force the data to be between 0 and 1, right? The training set data. Huh? Y is between 0 and 1. I created Y that way. Maybe the data was not. Now, I think, I think there's a problem here. I think we're talking about two different mm -hmm. things here. I think the date your yeah. training set output data is a linear combination of your training set input data. Mm -hmm. And then I think you're trying to recover the W1, W2, and W3. Yes, we want to recover them. But there's no sigmoid involved. 
I want a Sigma to be involved. <coughs> I want that to be involved. Okay, but how do you know that you're, so you're given this input data, right? X, you're given two inputs and one output, or you know, if you want to call it a, a one input of two with two values and one, out and one output, bunch of rows. How do you know that one over one plus e to the negative, you know, whatever is going to be the, is the function? I mean, I can use different functions, but I want to use this one now. But do you, how do you know that, 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 that this fits the input data, the, the training set Probably data? Map it between 0 and 1. And my y's are actually between 0 and 1. OK. So you look at the input data, but you have uh, uh, OK. Oh, no, this is not about data mining, it's more about, I, I thought we wanted to go towards neural networks. Hmm. Well, I thought the idea here was that your output was a linear combination of your input, and the goal was to find what that linear combination was. Yeah, but it's not linear anymore. Okay, that's, that's what I don't understand. I don't understand why you're generating training data that looks so strange. And if you already know what, how your training data was generated, um, then it's then it's, you're not doing very much with it. I mean, this is just for the implementation of the algorithm. Now I see like, oh, I can recover the weights which I know are true, and then I can take other data which I find online and then put it in, into it. But I don't see where the problem is. Well, the problem is so and we kind of wa want to use this as a layer for a recurrent neural network, and they want to understand, oh, how do we get to these picture on, on the internet, and how do we put different of these layers behind each other? That's, that's actually where we wanted to go. Right, but I see I'm still missing this point here of um, <coughs> how do you, so you're generating your training set using one function, yeah. and then you're generating your neural network already somehow knowing that function by magic? No, but I wanted to implement this model, so my model has fixed the data, so I can ensure that my algorithm works, that my gradient descent works. I mm. mean, this is not about data mining. In data mining... Well, the, the problem I'm seeing is, I guess, how... If you didn't know how the uh, the training set was generated, what would you do? Yeah, I guess you would have some knowledge. And you would just put different, I mean, it depends, right? Okay, if it's just speed forward network, then you put different layers behind each other, then you train your model, you check your predictions, then you add layers or remove layers and check your error and All right. stuff like that. So and it's like a sentence and it's sequential data. Then you have a recurrent neural network which can handle sequences. Right. And this is just but, the first step. Right. But I think it's cheating to use as your, to know what your, how your training data was generated. And this is just a test case. Don't you right. do test cases when you program? Sure, but that's too. This is too easy of a test case. We need to have training easy. data, and we need. I want. Here's what I want to do with neural networks. But then you you don't know if your if your algorithm works because then you find some better values and and you don't know the true better values. But still, I can check because I generated mm. the data, so I can see. Does my gradient descent work? Does is my derivative Okay, work? okay. I guess I guess this function. I what I don't like about this is I think that uh, that it's it's. What I want to be able to do is take some data, input and output, and find a function that fits that takes the inputs and generates the outputs without knowing in advance how I generated my training set. That's what I don't like. Yes, of course. But but if you just run this test case, you see oh my algorithm works. And of course, we found a bug. Um, okay. And calculated the test function. Okay, wait, then wait, wait, of wait, could wait, go wait, on, wait, of wait. Could go online wait, now and wait, wait, some other data wait, into it. wait, uh, wait. Why? Okay, so if I was going to do a simple test, why not just make y a linear com? Why not make the output a linear combination of the input? Why? Why do we have to 
mess with this extra well, function here. Because the logic to implement logistic regression. Yeah, but that's linear regression, right? If it's the other way. If we don't have sigma, then it's a linear regression, yes. Okay. So but I now we want logistic regression. What does logistic regression mean anyway? If I have, the, I have the, the sigma function, the logistic function. But see, that's like a classification, right? Logistic means true or false, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. It is, it is usually. But that's not what we're doing. We're trying to get numbers out, right? Classification well, we're not it. classifying here, are we? In some sense. What? We were trying to get an output. We're trying to get numbers as input <coughs> and numbers as output. We're not yeah, trying to get. I just programmed this really quick. Usually, you would have like different cases, and then you would set the threshold at zero point five, and then then you would set them. Then you have the probability, and then. You would but set we, them this isn't even a logistical zero. problem. Yeah. Is the issue? I just implemented it really quick. Okay, but <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why we have a sigmoid function in here if we're doing. But for, for the nonlinearity, we need to even this out. <laughs> we want to. Understand why is this one? No, I, I think I'm like because you're trying to. This isn't even a classification problem. This is a regression problem, right? Yeah, in this case, yes, it pretty much looks like a regression problem. So I don't see why we need a sigmoid in here. For the nonlinearity, because we want to put different of these layers behind each other later. Yeah, but I mean, right now we're just testing, right? Yeah. So why do we need a sigmoid function in our, our simplest test case would be that the output is a linear combination of the input. Yeah, but we want in our neural network, we later want these nonlinear function like sigmoid or tangent. But why would we want it for the test case? We just want, I don't know, that, that was what the guy explained first and I kind of liked it. And I kind of like uh, how Jim said, oh, we can consider this one layer and then how it follows. Because the same thing applies. It applies the forward step where we just program, uh, calculate our output, and then our backward propagation, with, which is just the chain rule, where we just take the derivative okay. of the log function with respect to w. Okay, the two and things. It doesn't matter how many, uh, how many layers we have. I'm still confused about this whole layers thing, but I'm still lost in. To yes, yes. For the simplest possible example, I don't see why we need sigmoid. And second of all, you keep talking about this like it's a classification network, whereas it's not. It's a regression network. We want the output should be a number, not true or false. Yes, we have a number now. I, I don't know how it was in the original node source, but it works pretty well. And I mean, if we put different layers behind it, then these can just. I don't know what that means. Set. These numbers. If we would this output and put it into the same model again, something like that. Yeah. Okay. I I'm lost here. The important I thing is just that we. The important thing is just that we use gradient descent. Okay, but That's so we don't need sigmoid for that. Oh, we need it now. We need it because then we would could say like oh. I mean, yeah, we, technically we don't need it, but then we have don't have nonlinearity. Then we only have a bunch of linear functions, and then. Well, yeah, but you're cheating if you already know what your neural network. Yeah, no, you're I'm not cheating. I'm just implementing this logistic regression model. You're and implementing a model that's equivalent that's to the how your training data was generated. There's no way you know how your training data was generated. You, you don't know that it's this one is place. A test case. Hello, this hello, is hello. Uh, ISO oh, Optilinear, you can, can you hear our <laughs> guest? Can you hear our guest, Mr. ISO? Because uh -huh. we, were, uh, we were worried I'd sound like I'm just talking to myself. Our guest is Fierce Crocodile. Uh, awesome, you can be heard. Uh -huh. So our guest is Fierce uh -huh. Crocodile, and we're trying to figure out neural networking, and I think my understanding of it is now is you've broken my actual real neural network that I use inside my head, and I, my, my inter understanding has gone backwards because mm. I'm seriously confused as to how come you need nonlinearity here when you're not really getting any because you're already applying the same function as you use to generate your training data. This is just test data to see if the gradient is. Why do you need a sigmoid function in the test data? 
for a long time. But you said this is testing, right? Simple test. So I need f to, 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 to get the argument to get from the logistic regression model to the neural network to then argue that this can be considered as one layer of uh, artificial neural yeah. network. Okay, maybe I'm just too stupid for this. I, I don't know. Um, because I don't, I don't really see how. To me, the simplest model would be to make a linear combination and then try to find the, 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 the weights of the linear combination. Yes, but then in a neural network you apply a nonlinear function, which Why? is what we call the activation function. Why? You get nonlinearity. What if I don't want nonlinearity? Um, yeah, well, you don't have to use it. You can use the identity matrix. Okay. I mean, the, the problem here, I see what you're saying, I think. You're saying in different layers you would use different sigmoids. Yeah, usually nowadays they use all atomic locally sets. But yes, of course. Oh, so this is just one example of a possible sigmoid function. Uh, oh, that's, that's really neural, sure. not neural networking, sorry. Yeah. It's neural networks. You take none with it yeah, yeah, and you yeah. like it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all it's 4 a.m. Yes. Why are we getting there? I can feel it now. Okay. Yeah, we. Yes. You, you don't need to use nonlinearity, but we want to use it now because of what people mean. Okay. So do we have this now? No, no. I still, I, I still want the simplest case is not. is Linearity. It will be. Yes, but but he kind of argues on the nonlinear case, and it, it kind of makes more sense because this is what people use. Well, I don't see how this is the simplest case. When are we getting it a is. beer? Oh, you and I. Are, when are you and I getting a beer? Uh, eventually, not not tonight apparently, because tonight I'm going to apparently get drunk on neural networks. Yeah, just just accept. Uh, no, I mean, no. I Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Can I choose my own sigmoid function? Yeah, you can, but then you need to recalculate the gradients, obviously. Yeah, of course you can use different functions. You can also not use. Okay, but I guess my problem is, what if I want to use a family, like let's say, can I do Fourier analysis using neural networks? A Fourier? Yeah, quite. You're you're right. Sadly, uh, yeah, it's sort of the opposite of sober. It's like being too sober. <laughs> okay. So could I? I guess I guess what I'm saying is, either neural networks are much less interesting than I think they are, or I'm not understanding what you're doing. Yeah, they are less interesting. But can we just go through this? Not unless I get to, not unless you explain, um, Well, I send you this, this other picture. Oh god, another 300 dimensions picture? Yes, another 300 dimension picture, but then we not, oh, I don't know if I can explain it now. Dude, <laughs> the 300, hey, I, put I don't so know why you're trying to, you didn't put that much. I looked at that picture. That was a pretty sucky looking picture. Hang on. Wait, well, the second one? Well. With the bubbles and the blue thingy thing? You just had like a bunch of lines. I'm going to go ahead and bring them up again. Hang on. Yeah. Stand by. Ah, uh, so tired. Because if you could make this argument, this is one layer of a, of a neural network. Okay, so I'm looking at your one that has like squares and dots. And a bunch of lines yeah. between everything, and then a bunch of W11, W5, 300. This just looks yeah, like a horrible was, mess. This was supposed to be, in, to, supposed to be matrices. Yeah, I did it in paint. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't even understand what it's doing. You have lines going everywhere. Right you have W with a blue line going somewhere to nowhere. Um, I'm sorry, this looks really bad. Um, mm. I, I guess uh, the I guess the problem uh, is we're gonna we're gonna have to okay let's see, um, okay. 
There you go. I have to agree with ISO Optolinear mostly because I'm confused. So I think we're gonna. St I think we need to stop basically now, um, yeah. because I don't really understand what you're doing. I don't see the va either. I don't see the value of it, because I know how to do curve fitting, and to me, curve fitting is difficult. And it would be nice if there was an easier way to do it. But what you're doing here is just freaking weird. Hmm. Okay. Well. <laughs> Very good. I don't get. I don't get how this is a simple case. To me, the simplest case would be without the sigmoid. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I bet I don't care either at this point. Um, so I've got to agree with Isooptolinear here, again, only because um, he's agreeing with me. So I think I'm going to give up on neural networks for now or or something. I, and, I, and if I... My feeling about neural networks has always been that you're trying to get a linear combination of your variables. You're basically trying to do curve fitting and somehow put linear algebra into the whole thing. Like you have a bunch of inputs, you linearly combine them, stick them into a bunch of functions, combine them, and hope for the best. That's exactly what we did. We combined x and put it into the sigmoid function. Right. But oh, right. Oh, no. but I need to sneeze. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I agree with okay, you. Okay, okay, I, I agree. I can hear myself now. Okay, now oh. I can't. Okay. It's for things curve fitting won't work on. Curve fitting works on everything if you if you try hard enough. Um I mean it, as long as you have a finite number of inputs, um I mean, in theory, if you have a finite number of inputs and unique outputs, there necessarily exists a function, a curve that fits them. It just might be a very ugly curve that's not very useful. Uh, I mean, you can interpolate, you can use partial functions, you can use non, you can use high degree polynomials in multiple variables. Um, yeah, I don't really know. I think what we, what I was trying to do. What was I trying to do? Are you still there? I think we've lost our special guest. Let me double check here. Where the hell is my Google Hangouts? Oh, this is good. I don't even know where the hell I am anymore now. All right, hang on. Oh, there we are. You're still there, right? Oh, you've left the call. Okay, I'm going to leave this call too. <sighs> okay. Bye, 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 bye. Thank you. No, it was, it was going downhill pretty quickly to begin with. And honestly, I, I'm not... We haven't ruined our friendship. I think Fierce Crocodile and I, we need to figure this out in some other way. I think, I think that's the problem. Um, so I guess now that it's totally the wrong time to do it, I'll explain what my goal is here, one of my goals. Um, thank you. That'll be a very good plan for you. Um, but for right now, let the poor Ger You know, the German people, when they get angry, though, that's, it's really pretty bad. Plus, I heard him talking to someone who might have been Japanese earlier. It, that was on stream, by the way. So, in, you know, when the Japanese and the Germans get together, uh, I'm going to skip this Pomodoro. Uh, when the Japanese and Germans get together, that it's never any good. It's it's always a bad thing. Um, okay. So let me go ahead and... So this is good. This is, I think, the second session I've had today that is completely pointless. Um, <laughs> channel is so much yikes. Uh, so what I'm trying to do here, actually, and maybe I should have explained this before I went through this whole process, uh, the, p the right ascension and declination of the sun can be estimated, uh, CNC machine, that sounds somehow even worse than neural networks. I'm going to Google it real quick, and maybe I can ruin my friendship with you. Let's see what this does. Yeah, this, this sounds bad. This sounds like it deals with the real world, which I don't like. Oh, there's some close to me, though. Okay. No, we're not going to be talking about that anymore. Um, good, good. So 3D printers are out because, hey, that's too close to the real world. Um, I'd like to get a 1D printer. You know, none of this 2D bullshit. 
just dots on a line and have to interpret them somehow. Um, right, so what I'm trying to do here is um, there are many astronomical functions that depend on time. And they're not trivial to predict because they don't quite follow a sine wave or a cosine wave, even though it's, oh, I like that. So you basically take real life things and abstract them into a, into a number, into number series, which are technically numbers. That would be cool. Because then eventually you could have the entire universe in numerical form and never need the actual universe anymore. So then you can destroy the real universe and live entirely within a computer generated scenario of, oh. Ooh. Do you keep doing this until you're down to like one atom of the metal? Or do you go even further and basically split it into its electrons? Um, it's basically taking the universe and reducing it to a slice of fairy cake. The reference there, of course, being from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where Trin Triangulum um, worked out that you could extrapolate the universe from a piece of fairy cake because everything is connected to everything else. Theoretically, still not disproven. Um, but of course, he ran into problems, uh, which I forgot what they were. Um, okay. So I was lost until just now, but now I'm even loster. So now I'm, I'm floating around in a world where the universe is being sucked back in through blueprints while some guy's talking about fairy cake. Uh, and then Zephod Beeblebrox ended up eating the fairy cake uh, when he was brought down to the uh, machine that drives you insane because it shows you how small of a part of the universe you are compared to the whole universe. Except Zephod Beeblebrox was in a special alternate... I'm going to explain the plot of Hitchhikers now. Was a special alternate universe that was created just for him, so he was actually the most important thing in that universe. So he he was able to survive the... Uh, I forget what they called it, but he was able to survive it. And he ate the fairy cake afterwards. Uh, but of course, the fairy cake was only destroyed in that copy of the universe. And then in the fifth book, um, all the universes sort of shrink down back into one universe that gets destroyed by the Vogons. So ultimately, the whole series collapsed. Yes, he was the most important thing in that universe because that specific universe was created for him by the guy with the briefcase whose name I... Rusta. It was Rusta who created the uh, the uh, universe for him. And actually, I guess, Zephod was involved in the whole process somehow. Um, and so basically, that's because uh, Zephod left through a window in Rusta's office instead of through the door, because if he left through the door, he would have entered the real universe. Um, but whatever. Okay, so... I think at one point earlier today, we were six levels nested into irrelevance. Um, we started out trying to figure out why this was happening. Google Pages was not happy with one of my pages. And then we just went down a whole rabbit hole full of things that somehow ended up in um, neural networks. No, 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 we will not. No, 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 no. We will not be clicking on YouTube links inside of this stream because I do not like streaming streams. It's actually not that good. An RPL? Uh, I'm streaming from a VM. I mean, there is a REPL in the VM. D don't even get me started. There's a REPL in the... There's a REPL in the Firefox in the VM on my machine. There's a REPL... Oh, no, I'm not streaming from a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> that would be cool, though. Uh, I'm streaming from a VM, a virtual machine on my real machine. And anyway, uh, I'm now going to figure out a way to shut up. I'm not. It's a real machine. Honest. Uh, although Raspberry Pi would be a pretty cool thing to have. So the second piece of hardware would be really useful. No. Are you kidding? Number one, you're the only person in chat. Number two, I'm in love with you. And I mean that in kind of a creepy, now that you're in town way, you know, you might want to avoid me kind of thing. Um, and third of all, I forgot what I was talking about, so I don't have a third of all. <laughs> yes. Um, so any, st yes, you'll have, 
if I, by the way, if uh, I probably shouldn't even remind people of this, earlier in one of the streams, which is on YouTube, we looked at like three or four places for you to live at, and assuming you're telling the truth, you ended up moving to one of those. So pretty much, if you were in the mood to do this, and somehow you knew other information about ISO Optolinear, linear, th don't don't tell them that. Okay. So okay, okay. So he's basically doxing himself. So basically, if you want to go visit him, and he wants people to come at him again. Not a wise thing to be doing. Uh, he wants to have beer with people. Uh, New Mexico, of course, has some of the highest crime rates in the city. They, but you know, what the hell? Invite people into your home. Just see if I care. The hell am I doing here? Okay. Now. I have. I. Oh my God. I thought it had only been going for a few minutes. I've been going for two hours and fifteen minutes. And we've gotten nothing done all day today. Well, that, that is how I manage in Albuquerque as well. I have no valuable property except for this computer. If you take this computer, I won't be able to stream. Um, and if I'm not able to stream, I will come and hunt you down because that will be the only purpose left in my life. Take everything else and I can still stream. You're good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get off the stream now and bang my head against the wall a few times. And if I survive that process, I might come back tomorrow. Thank you for watching. I know you don't want me to leave. Why? This is this has been a completely pointless stream about neural networks in which we never actually turned, you know, we never actually thought about neural networks themselves. Uh, I okay, I might. I don't know if I really want to. That still somehow sounds like it involves reality. But thank you and good night, everyone. God bless us, everyone. Tiny Tim is dead.